Hey, Stargazers. Happy July to all of you. This week, we're going to be looking at a few hidden constellation gems in the space of the sky that's sort of in between the spring and summer skies. And these constellations are by no means bright, but with a little bit of careful attention, even in light polluted skies, you can tease out their brightest stars. And then if you have a chance to get to a dark sky, you can marvel at just how bright they can really appear under the darkest conditions. We're going to be beginning tonight looking about two hours after sunset. Uh, although if you're looking even an hour after sunset, you can begin to see this pretty easily. So let's look up almost at the top of the sky. We'll be drawing an imaginary line between the stars Arcturus and Vega. Arcturus, you might recall, is most easily found using the arc of the Big Dipper's handle. In the hour or two after sunset this time of year, you can find it high up in the southwest. Vega is the brightest star in the Summer Triangle, which we covered last week, and is a little bit more than halfway up in the east, a couple hours past sunset. So this line we're drawing is quite high tonight, from the east to the southwest. Now let's begin at Vega and move along that line. About a third of the way along, look for this grouping of four stars. This is an asterism, a pattern of stars, known as the Keystone. This marks the torso of a famous hero you may have heard of, Hercules. For such a famous hero, he's got an awfully dim constellation, but there is a bit of a stick figure to trace out, usually appearing upside down. In the Keystone of Hercules, on the side that's farthest from Vega, about two-thirds of the way along that side, there's one of the most famous star clusters in the sky. It's called the Hercules Globular Cluster. In a very dark sky, it's visible to the naked eye as a faint smudge. In binoculars, it looks kind of like a fuzzy star, as we see it here. And in a telescope, you can start to resolve individual stars. This cluster is huge. It's almost 150 light years across. It contains hundreds of thousands of stars. The cluster is over 20,000 light years away. All right, so one of these weeks, we're going to talk in depth about the speed of light and how light years work. But for now, suffice it to say that light travels incredibly fast. And yet, despite traveling that fast, the light we see from the Hercules Globular Cluster tonight has been traveling for over 20,000 years since it left that cluster. Put it another way. Back in 1974, a radio message was sent towards the Hercules Cluster using the Arecibo Radio Telescope in Puerto Rico. Now, this wasn't really an attempt to make contact or anything, but more of a demonstration of technological capabilities. Either way, that message, which is traveling at the speed of light, won't get to that cluster for over 20,000 years. And here's the amazing thing to me. Despite that distance, incredible as it is, you can see that cluster tonight with binoculars or a small telescope, even from skies that aren't all that dark. Well, continuing along that line from Vega to Arcturus, we come to our second overlooked constellation. This one's called Corona Borealis, the Northern Crown. Many of our modern official constellations come to us by way of the Greeks, and this one is no exception. It certainly isn't very bright, but the shape of the stars is easy to see once you know what to look for. So maybe that's why it's been seen as so many different things throughout time and around the world. To the Chinese, it's been called a string of coins. To some Siberian tribes, the polar bear's paw. To Aboriginal Australians, the boomerang. Native American tribes, such as the Mi'kmaq, saw the bear's den. The Pawnee saw it as the circle of chiefs. And the Blackfeet saw a spider god, and the nearby stars of Hercules marked the spider's web. So it's a cool little constellation. It's very unassuming, but definitely worth looking for. So that's going to be our weekly challenge this week. Give it a look and see what you see in the Northern Crown. Let us know in the comments. 
All right, going now from things that you'll really have to look for, a little bit dim in the sky, to some of the brightest things in the sky. This week we have the full moon, and July's full moon is called the Buck Moon, or the Thunder Moon. Certainly added quite a bit of thunder in the Chicago region recently. The moon will be at its fullest the evening of Saturday the 4th. Your calendar might say the 5th, but in Chicago's time zone, it's definitely the night of the 4th. It'll be at its fullest. The next night, though, on the 5th, pretty cool view when the moon will appear in between two bright planets, Jupiter and Saturn. So this should be a really neat view, pretty much equally spaced here from Chicago between these two planets. Of course, those two planets much farther away out there in the solar system, the moon quite close to Earth, but a nice alignment here on the night of the 5th. Now, Jupiter and Saturn right now, I hope you've had a chance to see them already. They're going to be at their best viewing coming up in mid-July. So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about what you'd expect to see with these two through binoculars, through telescope, and also with the naked eye. But for now, know that they're visible, and especially in the night of the 5th, get out there and see that nice arrangement with the moon. Well, that's what we've got for you this week. Don't forget to subscribe so you can get notifications for all the great content coming from the Adler Planetarium. Also, follow the Adler on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have a great week, and we'll see you soon.